What's up, guys? <laughs> welcome to The Return. I'm Josh Cribs. And I'm Maria Cribs, and welcome to another beautiful day. What? I mean, I mean. Uh, uh, oh, you always stop it at the end, because, at the beginning, and be like, uh, uh, Okay, uh, I know. Uh, a new day, uh, a new day has come. I've been getting my weather sources from TikTok. Like, my weather. Weather, up, you've been getting uh, weather updates. For some reason, TikTok is like the, the premier source for everything nowadays. And I all these like weather you're alerts to keep were popping up. With up. The young, our, the young generation, mm-hmm. Ryan, t- TikTok, like I'm we're in a you, different TikTok, generation. TikTok was saying that it's going to be a stream of bad weather in Ohio, and I'm turning on different news stations. No one really was saying it on the news outlets locally, so I I'm like, wait, a, you didn't hear that? I didn't hear that because Cleveland is Cleveland. I think we expect like at any day or at any moment it can start. No, it that, could start hailing hey, at any moment. They said it at, on TikTok, it's going to happen. You know what? We should do a <laughs> intro weather report. Every time we start the show, <laughs> we talk right, about, you the heard about the uh, What did Puxatani Phil have to say? Exactly. Man, Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Bartholomew <laughs> Phil. I know, know he's a lie. He a lie and the truth ain't in him. <laughs> Bartholomew Ryan, is Ryan, have you heard about this alleged or this severe uh, yeah, weather I system? Have. Com- I saw something on the news about Finally, it. Okay. I was just wondering, like, am I, is my dog, because she's home alone? I'm like, I got to get home, like. I don't want her to be in a Ryan, tornado alone. Oh, what kind of what kind not of dog? A tornado what kind alone? Of do- Hold on, he's I don't a think he's a dog you're lover. In a tornado with your dog. I don't <laughs> think that's good either. No, I could like like you know how they're like soldiers they jump on grenades. Yes, I'll oh, be yeah. that with my dog. I like jump over. And, it ain't like, gonna work oh, like yeah. that in a tornado though. Well, if she goes out, I go out with her then. Because there you dogs go. get stressed out, Josh. They do, but more so lightning. You should have brought your dog to the show. Yeah, you should have. No, nah, she be eating everything in here. Oh, she ain't nothing really to eat. Ain't no like All these wires. Oh yeah, okay, be nibbling everything. Okay, so they said. I mean, it's supposed to be a severe weather system coming in, but I think right now it looks pretty good. It's you know it's a little gloomy outside, it's but it's come still out a beautiful day though. It'll but it is raining. Shout out to my family down in Columbus, Ohio. It's my aunt, and my uncle's birthday today. Oh, wow. My aunt Prixie's birthday was yesterday. Happy April birthday. birthday, right? Happy birthday to them down there. But they did confirm that it is raining, like cats and cats dogs and down dogs. in Columbus. So I think it's it's, <laughs> it's soon to come this way. All and right. Josh, you watching some basketball last night. You watching the girls get into it. Yeah, we was watching the girls. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to, I'm going to talk to about that in a little bit coming up. Oh, coming up, okay. I want to go into? into Browns Uh-oh. a little bit because in the news, they were talking about the Art Modell Law. Mm-hmm. Or the, you, you, did you hear about I've been, it? I've been here, yeah. The Art Modell Law, Ryan. Um, legislation legislation is trying to be passed by the, Cle- by the city of Cleveland to uh, keep the Browns in Cleveland. Cleveland City Councilman yeah. Brian, is it Cray? Is it Cray? What's, what's his last name? CR? I, I wrote crazy. <laughs> but he's trying to. I know that's wrong. The city right. of Cleveland is trying to keep the, the Browns What's in his name, Cleveland. Ryan? Uh, Brian Cassie. Cassie, okay. And uh, we, we saw piece, bits and pieces, actually watched a lot of the uh, the press conference yeah. that he had. And um, uh, Ryan, do you feel as if. Uh, moving, if the team potentially moves the, uh, to Brook Park, that it's moving the team away from Cleveland, per se. I don't, I mean, no. Me personally, no. I don't think it is. I mean, I guess l- literally it is. And according to the law, it is. Uh, this Art Modell law, because I did my due diligence. Because I don't think many people know what before that is yesterday and, right. even heard of it, let okay, alone know that saying? it was a thing. What is it saying, It's Ryan? basically saying that an owner can't just move where their team plays the majority of their home games without... Um, a certain number of restrictions and it's that the city council and mayor have to both agree to sign off on that or the owner has to give a six month notice and allow people in the area to buy out basically that franchise oh. but the browns are worth 4.5 billion so i don't know anybody around here that's got that type of dough outside of and the not hand, just outside that. of Jimmy right not just that this has not been passed yet is they're intru- they've so introduced trying to make them go through the legislative pro- leg- legislative process the legislative process yeah. um and not only that, they he was invoking when the team left. Again, that's why it's called the Art Modell, because he was the previous owner who took the Browns to Baltimore. Right. Now, do we feel, I don't think any of us feel that it's an equivalent comparison <laughs> no, to compare Brooke, the Browns potentially going 14 miles down the road. Is, is it even 14 miles? No. I don't think it's 14 I, I, miles. Yeah, it, I don't even think it's that far. Yeah, it's, it's not even that far. It's an drive. eyeball distance. Yeah, right. exactly. It's, it go from right in front of you to, oh, it's, it's right there. Like you still can see it to Brook Park. Right. So I don't think it compares to the team leaving to Brook Park. But again, you said legally, by the law, it would, of course, because it's Cleveland to Brook Park. 
and um and and we didn't talk about the financial impact that it would have on the city of Cleveland. That's what I worry about. You yeah. know, I don't I don't want them to take the stadium outside of um Cleveland because I worry about the Cleveland economy. It's already rough as it is out here, especially with us being in a recession that no one's really we're in a recession. It's tight for everybody right now. So the city of Cleveland needs that stadium to stay here. But I do for you know, the, as far the as businesses the ha- as, in Cleveland. Yeah, as far as the Haslam's go, I mean, I looked at it in another way. Like if I was a a, a, a business owner. I wouldn't want someone telling me what I can and cannot do with my company. Right. But when you're getting kicks back, kickbacks from the the city and tax, you know, tax write offs and things like that, I'm sure there's a bigger conversation at play that we're all unaware of. Right. It's, you just can't up and take it and root it from a different city. Right. Without and, some type of. And when we discuss it again here on the show as well, yeah. um, I don't think we're discussing it from a city financial standpoint. Right. It's not that we don't care. I can say that. It's just that it's out of sight, out of mind, the financial aspect, yeah. the problems that um, potentially could arise from, you know, businesses in and around the city of Cleveland. Right. Um, Brook Park is one of those in and around cities that would be affected if the team were to move, you know, past Brook Park or away. Um, but I still think that it's not it's not too much of a difference because, again, it, we're, it's not even 14 miles. It's, Right up the road, and um, the businesses that but it's still outside of Cleveland, so the, it's the not... city limits of Cleveland, yeah. Brook and so Park, me, to I'm me an advocate, is still Cleveland, but yeah, still, I'm, I mean, if yeah, I grew a... up in Brook Park, I would still say I I'm from I Cleveland. Don't, I don't see it that way, and I do look at I'm a small business advocate, you know, I, small businesses run this world, this country, right? And I would just hate for it to be taken outside of the city limits and all those businesses that depend on that seasonal income or that influx of people being in the town around that time right? to have that hit like I, that. I wonder if other uh, cities that have NFL teams that move to the a, a suburb in their, uh, in, in, in their city had issues. I know um, growing up in Washington, D.C., it was the, uh, the uh, Washington Commanders, red, then the Redskins, used to play at RFK Stadium, mm-hmm. right in the heart of D.C. Okay. And uh, Northwest Washington, D.C. And and then they moved to Maryland. Mm-hmm. They moved uh, about, I want to say... How far away? Uh, 11, 12 miles to Landover, Maryland. Mm-hmm. To, and that's where FedEx Stadium, which is now old, which they might be looking to get a new stadium again. Um, their practice facility is in Virginia, way out in Virginia, Ooh, wow. Dallas, by Dallas, by Dallas. Okay, I know where they're outside. Right. So I don't think I didn't never being in the city in Washington. No one was talking about the businesses. No one, maybe because it's the nation's well, capital. Well, I think too because no you were you were younger. You know, no one in your family probably owned any businesses that it would affect them. That, but that but, hurt. I mean, it is it is what it is. <laughs> no, so I'm what I'm fine. saying is now that we're older, I know, and Josh and I, right. you know, we, when we get into business conversations, everybody's like, you got to take your emotion out of business. I understand. But we're human beings. So I personally worry about those business owners and how it's going to affect them. Sure, of course, people are going to still be booking hotels downtown, you know, because you right. got to have places because it's for lodging. Because it's literally but, right there. Yeah. Even if you, the teams that will come from other uh, uh, teams that we will play, will stay downtown still. Yeah. And then they will travel the short distance to Brook Park. Yeah, I mean, we see NFL teams, there's plenty in, in today's day and age. I mean, the Bills didn't really play in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Dallas, they don't really play in Dallas. I'm pretty sure they play in Arlington. So, I mean, right. it, it, like, yeah, I mean, it's totally a stretch, obviously, comparing moving to Baltimore to moving to Brook Park. I think he's more just trying to make his point. I don't right. know, but but I, I think, agree with you. It's, yeah. it's, in, no, in no sense is it really moving the team and out of then Cleveland. I would be pissed. Could you imagine where we live now? Someone ups and just puts a stadium in our city. And I'm like, all oh, this traffic up in here. And you know I what I mean? I get that. But I, that means the traffic breeds business, like you said. The traffic breeds. But the residents value, that are already there. The, the, it also, but the residents. I get that. Uh-huh. But it will increase the value of Brook Park. Because now you have more businesses, an influx of businesses, the influx of your uh, your um, property value going up. Because but not it's everybody that lives NFL in Brook Park Stadium. owns the owns a business in Brook Park. I'm talking about the residents being irritated by the the influx of people that are going to be in their town for those I months. That, you know what I mean? That, that I'm, stadium, I'm, I'm trying to get a target. And I'm sitting in two hour traffic because somebody headed down to the stadium. I'm gonna be a little upset. I get that. Let's talk more about it. Let's take our first commercial break. Okay, when we return, don't go anywhere. All right, now, Ryan, your city, don't even say what city you live in. I'm sure it's a nice town, right? Say they put a stadium like two miles up the road from you. 
Now, you know your everyday commute to Starbucks or Dunkin's, Giant Eagle, wherever you go. If you was a... Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> could you imagine? I would certainly have conflicted feelings. <laughs> Part of me would be like, obviously, like, oh, that's super cool, like, you know, all the it's commerce. Right the and yeah. But, however, I will say this, though. Uh -huh. As much as I love the Browns being in Cleveland and I don't want them to leave, I don't necessarily want to live downtown because of a lot of that, because of traffic, because, because of, of I don't think influx. it would necessarily be the same thing. Right. But I, I would like being a short distance away where I can escape it. You're right. Yeah, see? And I... I Wait a minute, okay. Ryan never said he didn't want it. You, you don't want the team to move? No, I want him to... You want him to stay? Downtown, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And, and, I and think do his, you? I think, yeah. Because I, I feel like our last conversation, I was like looking at y'all like, y'all wanted to just leave like that? <laughs> no, it's not... And see, you I'm keep glad saying, you said that, Ryan. Yeah. People keep saying, leave. Right. Not, they're yeah. just uh, going across the, the block. the beautiful shores of Lake Erie. To me, it's around the corner. Or it's up the sh down the street. Mm -hmm. So when we say leave, I think the only problem that mm -hmm. I'm hearing mm -hmm. is that the businesses in the city of Cleveland. Because we care about I that. just don't yeah. think that they would be affected that much. What? Because you... listen to this. The stadium is on the water right now. Mm -hmm. And they get a lot. Yes, it'll be affected to whereas that foot traffic, right? Because people, you know, walk from well, the, the hotels. The businesses. The, you, you know, you gotta I get think it. the hotels, gotta, people will still you, stay at the hotels. Not necessarily. They might be staying out more towards Strongsville or, you know, Medina. Even. And maybe that might be in the package for the team to leave. Like everyone gets a stipend or well, what about some when type you wake of up business at the hotel, credit. You got to get some well, breakfast. Well, I will say, if in, in the scenario the Browns do move, then obviously they're going to just tear that down. They've been talking about for I don't know how long now this lakefront development yeah, plan. Yeah, what is Everybody it always talking, like, yeah, what even is that? Right. Show me some renderings. Like if, <laughs> Show if, me, baby. If it's going to leave, then I want to see that actually come to fruition. Right. I don't know if they're just talking out their butts or what. It right. might be a new community. Right. A, that's what I mean. Like, we might be staying in the new where the new stadium was right, right. eventually. But I'm thinking like, you, Josh, you, you, I think because you played down there. And, and let me just say this. Josh is from Washington, D.C., the, I am, na I the am, nation's <laughs> capital. He's used to all the oohs and ahs and all the tours <laughs> coming in. That's nothing to him. I'm severely concerned about the impact of removing the Cleveland Brown Stadium from right here in the city of Cleveland down to another city. Come, you got, you, Maria you, sounded more you, and more like you, a councilman or yeah. a councilwoman. <laughs> like she congressman, <laughs> congresswoman well, just, Cribs. Josh, when we go out of town, we wake up, we got to... Mayor park. Maria Cribs, ladies Baby, and gentlemen. Baby, when we go out of town, we got to wake up. Woman got, of the people. Go ahead. I'm I don't sorry. know why I do get a lot of people saying that they can see me in politics. Probably because I'm I'm very passionate about what I believe in. And I'm very. Hanny, awesome. ha, Hanny, I, I, don't, I don't like taking no name? for an answer. Uh, Hammy Lou Fa uh, 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 Famer. Fanny. Yeah, Fa Fanny Lou. Okay, so Josh, listen. When we go out of town, we book in the hotels. We downtown trying to we find trying to find some gas. We got to get some breakfast. Right. It's co it's too cold outside. We are gonna get one of these little tour shops and grab a shirt or a sweatshirt right. or something okay. like that. Then if we go into a game, we are gonna hang out at the bar so the traffic dis disperse. You know. The only Wink and time, Any place down there, their business are going to be affected, Josh. And I'm going to be real. The only time the businesses will be affected is in, in the fall during But a lot of companies season. only make their money during the season. Well, you know what I mean? there's two other stadiums that's also down there. And again, I'm I not, want them all down in Cleveland. I get it. You need to and stay I'm put. Not against it or for it. I'm, I'm kind of like the Don't Cleveland Browns. Nowhere. They're not about to be the... What was that voice? Don't you go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> is that the voice? Yeah, that's how the voice she does. Get in this room right now. <laughs> no, Josh, come on. It's some adult time no, in that, this room. I'm, I'm going to sleep. I'll be like, okay. Josh down on that game. Good. No, I'm going to bed. Strength. Stop, Josh. <laughs> no, okay. So you're not, okay, you're kind of, you want the, you want the stadium I'm to stay put. Devicles, devil's advocate. Devicles. Devicles. You don't even know your savior's I'm name. I'm being <laughs> You ain't peep that. That's true. She said you don't Told even know his, your savior. That's his leader. Yeah. That's I his leader. No, no, it's not. not. <laughs> the craziness. But uh -huh. I'm just being devil's advocate in, right. a, in a standpoint. They still they won't be the Brook Park Bombers. It's still gonna be Cleveland Browns. Yeah, that's true. It's still so. I just I think we're getting up a little bit too far up in arms. So when will all this? When is everything? They're gonna to make a decision, but I don't think they're gonna leave. When do you know when, Ryan? I don't know when, and if, if anybody tells you they know when, they're lying. Oh, nobody, okay. nobody, nobody knows. knows. There's so much uh, just in the air right now, like, and everybody's left in the dark. But I mean, it's it's tough. They're not going to come out and say just things to say it. So it's going to be a long, a long process. So right. buckle in. I, I, like like every I think the Browns years. will stay there. Okay. I, I I look forward to a new renovation. You know, one billion. I think it's going to they're going to do a really good job. You know, it's going to intake entail the the um the streets a little bit, not just the stadium. Um, I also believe that this controversy will will allow the 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 Browns organization to to boost make the city 
do some real de- real planning, yeah. long term yeah, yeah. planning yeah. for the whole like that pour whole... into this. That would yes. be the best. That would be because the best. I'm sure, door. you yes. know, the let's hazel. keep it here. But hey, we want to want it to look like the this. fact that I'm going to if it has them, the fact that I'm going to keep my my stadium right here. I'm definitely going to want some perks, though. Right. I'm definitely going to need to see it to help, you know, make some things happen for me. That's just business, right. you know? That's business. Um, I get that. Okay, yeah. I get so, that. I want to move on to, um, for a little bit, to uh, the Browns draft. Um, um, Andrew Barry, and this is my standpoint, my take as it relates to Browns in the draft. We don't need much. It's not a lot that we're going to look at in the draft. We're not the team now that we once were in the past that, we're always looking for that number one pick. We need to see who our quarterback is going to be. Right. We don't have a running back. We need to see that. You know what I mean? We yeah. don't need a guy. We have them. We need pieces to the puzzle. So in 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 proper fashion, Andrew Barry was quoted saying, you know, we don't look. We're not looking to the draft and right now players. He said the draft are uh, players are more long term investments. Mm-hmm. So he can. We are going to pick guys in the draft that we see the potential in. And um and that's going to maybe come in and not play play right away, uh, Ryan. How you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, most of the guys you draft in the first round are usually guys, except a quarterback, like a rookie quarterback who's going to sit behind a bridge quarterback. Most of these guys are guys that are come in and be starters day one. The Browns don't need that. And luckily, you know, we don't need it. And we don't have a first-round pick, so it works out for us well. I mean, you still have guys last year that you drafted, like uh, Siaki Ika waiting behind in the D-tackle room, um, Isaiah McGuire waiting in the end room, that haven't got opportunity to play yet, but they will. And, yeah, I mean, that's the good teams. You can trade for these star players and all you want, but the good teams just continue to reload and invest. And that's exactly. what Andrew Barry's done so far, and it's worked out really well. I mean, you guys got you got guys like D'Anthony Bell waiting there who are pretty capable of coming in. You got Rodney McLeod, you signed in undrafted, the, in, waiting exactly. to come in. So And injuries happen, so that's it, it's the smartest thing to do, and Andrew Barry does a really good job at it. Is it maybe like wives submit to your husbands, and then it's up to anybody's <laughs> interpretation. You go, you do what I say. The Bible says so. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Did, when you just you know, when, when, when you just read what Andrew Berry said, right? It's I, open to interpretation. I interpret it as if he's saying. Uh, draft players be does. We don't need none of them right now. We need proven guys out here on the field. I ain't spending no more money on the draft. I can, I, and I'm just, I'm just I saying. That's why we lose, use a lot. I think I agree with you. I. I and you Even know I agree too because, I, because I'm married to an undrafted free agent. Okay, okay. so we're a little biased to because I mean they biased. do they pay like millions, millions of, dollars of dollars to guys on these who guys proven themselves. Have not proven like yeah, you was good, you was good on the collegiate level, but you are gonna come up here and get that that tail whooped, and that's what happens every time. It you know happens. what I mean? Because like guys I said, how are, much on them he gonna be a dud? Exactly. I feel like the more you spend on them, the more of a dud they gonna be. And it's not just that. I think a lot nah, of times it's that. It's, it's that. Nope. A lot of times I, it's that. a fan basis, it's, it's Maria. Exactly, it's exactly that. Maria, are you uh are you possessed right now? Is uh-huh. is that your say is the devil? <laughs> Go you ahead. Know, sat- okay. Satanic. Stop talking right about this if I get my sage okay. in here. Go ahead. Okay. But I it I don't think whenever we put so much stock in in first round draft picks, we get uh our feelings hurt. We get, we get now disappointed. We get duped. It's we get not, bamboozled. We we bamboozled. We get tricked. And we can go down the list of quarterbacks where we got bamboozled. We can go down the list of DBs and, yeah. and, 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 and wide receivers, you know, and the list goes on. So that's not the way. I've always thought that a team is made up of second, third round draft picks and free agency of guys who've been there and done it and proved Come themselves in here and, prove and still have a lot left in the tank. Yeah. Um, I want to move on. And um, after this commercial break, I want to talk about the uh the schedule mm-hmm. that the Cleveland Browns have. So after this commercial break, we'll talk about the schedule. We'll be right back. All right, now welcome back to the show. Now wait a minute, the schedule has been released. The schedule has been released. <laughs> the Cleveland Browns arguably mm-hmm. uh, have the toughest 2024-25 schedule right now that's out. Because it's based off of their win percentage, oh. so they're playing. They're playing uh, top teams next year, teams like Kansas City. I'm looking at right now. You got the Chargers. I got it right here. Why you, you got Why you, you got Dallas Cowboys. Me, you got New York, who didn't do pretty good, but they're a prime time team. You got the you got the Dolphins. You got Baltimore, of course, twice in you know our own division. But we got the Jags, mm-hmm. the Saints. Um, um, Broncos who are looking for a team, and you got some other teams uh, sprinkled in there. Raiders, our division to play our division twice anyway makes us we're already up there. Yeah, when we're talking about strength of schedule, but when you add teams like Kansas City Chiefs, when you add teams like the Dolphins, um, uh, the the Chargers, 
the Jags, and the Saints, teams that are playoff teams, now you're looking at our our record and what it could be, could be and what it has to be. We have a fight on our hand. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the AFC North, right? We saw three teams go to the playoffs last year, and, and if you expect the Steelers, again, to be good as always, now they have Russell Wilson. I mean, they're always in the mix. Joe Burrow's getting back healthy. Lamar's going to be Lamar. And then you just mentioned the, the handful of teams that we're going to have to play. You know, it was nice last year to see Joe Flacco come in here and give us some hope in life, and I would never take it back, but now you reap the benefits of finishing second place in the in the AFC North, and we're going to have face really hard teams. So we thought last year was going to be a battle. I mean, my God, Josh, next year's going to be absolutely insane, and potentially opening up against the Eagles week one in Brazil – Potentially, I like hold that. On. I See, mean, hold that's on, gonna hold. be absolutely nuts. Ryan, hold on, <laughs> where are they going? Brazil. It's 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 like, down. Like, like Brazil, Brazil. He didn't announce it yet. Roger it's not Goodell nothing. Yeah, yet. nothing's official, but I mean, people. It it, like it's it's gonna, gonna either be the Browns or the Packers that are get, playing the Eagles. And in the Brazil. Packers don't want to go. I gotta get my bikini, yeah. my bikini body ready. I gotta get summertime fine. I got about. <laughs> What do you mean? May, you June, going to July, Brazil? August, September. I got about five months to get. You right. you going to Brazil now? Are we going? Are we going to Brazil? I don't know about we. It ain't no. It ain't no iron team or something. So like back that. to the strength of schedule. While Maria <laughs> plans her trip to Brazil <laughs> and gets her body oh, ready. Oh, I've never been to Brazil. I think that's a. I'm going to definitely Ryan try to get on that trip. Hell I'm yeah. like, man, y'all need some Browns alumni <laughs> and their wife and their family. Yeah, y'all need. They, we need to represent out there and get the you know Have the fan the base of Brazil all to be football Go fans. Oh, yeah. Browns. Ooh, I even be. I don't know who CB is, but I'll be in the CB costume if they need me to. Just Cleveland, get me to Brazil. Brown, you a re- <laughs> you're so real. funny. But the strength of the schedule. Okay. And Ryan said it. It's reaping the benefits of having a good season. Yeah, man. Now you're going to be in the forefront. You're going to get some of those primetime games. But you're going to have to, you're going to now play against the best in the season. Yeah. We, we're not looking at our schedule any longer like, man, we, we can see wins based off of the the lack of talent to teams that we're going to play. Right. Nah, we got, we, we got some. We got, some it's going to be an uphill battle for KC, real. KC, Chargers, Dolphins, right there, all teams in the playoffs. You got Dallas. And and not, let alone we got the Jaguar, but our again our division yeah, man. is the toughest. And we Gauntlet. got mm-hmm. Lamar's Lamar, and you said it. We got Joe Burrow back. <laughs> so again, this is why I go back to what I said last week. Our our team, our division, our our season will be will come down to Deshaun Watson being healthy. Because if he's healthy and firing on all cylinders, and he's back back. The second half of the Ravens game, that's 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 my, what I mean by back-back. Like, being the it factor. We're not asking you to go out there and throw for 300 like Flacco when he was on fire. I mean, you're the it factor. You're moving the chains. You're creating touchdowns. You're creating opportunities to score like he did in the second half of the Ravens. Mm-hmm. So when I say that, everybody know, like, oh, oh okay. Oh, you remember that, that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that guy. So if he's him, I think we, you know, we, we, we do well in this division and – with our strength of schedule. Yeah, no, I mean, we stand toe-to-toe with the best of them, even last year with all the injuries. And, of course, if you see Deshaun Watson come back and be what we expect Deshaun Watson to be when we traded all that haul for him, I mean, the Browns are in a perfect spot. We're bringing back so many guys that were dominant last year, especially on the defensive side of the football. Another year with Jim Schwartz, and then you bring in Mike Vrabel, you bring in Ken Dorsey, maybe a change of pace there with Deshaun Watson, get him on the right track. I mean, the sky's the limit for this team, literally. You have two-time coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski, now enamored with amazing That's football so minds. Mm-hmm. And the Really, the, the only thing that can... And I'm not going to go that forward by saying this, but really the Browns, in my opinion, if, is injuries and them stopping themselves, that being Deshaun Watson, not being fully Deshaun Watson. And if he is, I mean, I truly think the Browns stand toe-to-toe with the best teams in football. You said something. Uh, we got two-time head coach of the year. Right. I don't want Coach Stavansky, and I don't know how y'all feel about this, I don't want him to win Coach of, coach of the Year anymore. <laughs> Because you see, that yeah. comes with something. Yeah, it comes yeah. with you're always trying like, to figure want, it out. Or yeah, that's no, that means that yeah. you had yeah. to battle. Yep. Oh my yeah. God, look what he had to deal come with. He's through. coach of the year. Exactly. And, you know, you're, Josh, you're spot on because you guys look at guys like Andy Reid and Bill Belichick who don't have multiple awards. Don't, Mike Tomlin, who Mike Tomlin doesn't even have a it's coach of the year award. They're supposed exactly, to win. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So I don't want Coach Stefanski to win Coach of the Year anymore. No. Two's enough. I want us to expect to win and win. We are expected to win, so win. I don't want us to have to deal with injury. Now he has to pull a rabbit out of the hat. Oh, what we got here? Oh, we're in the playoffs now. I don't want none of that anymore. <laughs> and it's sad to say, no, it's not sad. It should be something that we should start to expect. Yeah. I expect playoffs. Right. I expect these things. And we shouldn't be worrying about injury and then our head coach has to pull us out of a jam. Um, you also mentioned, uh, you know, guy, our defense. You know, the addition of Rabel, Mike Vrabel from the Tennessee Titans. Um, we already had a, a dynamic powerhouse defense. 
do we expect our even as a fan base do we expect our defense to be top five again top of the league number one ranked defense again this year do we expect that i don't expect it i certainly think they're capable of it i i more so expect them to be more consistent on the road and that's what they where they struggle. They struggled last exactly. season. So you yeah. you expect them to ha- have it more of an emphasis. Fine. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's hard to project the, the 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 defense being so dominant, especially in the past a pass attack last year between our you know our trio of guys guarding the receivers. So I expect them to be as good. I mean, to expect them to be that dominant is maybe a stretch. But what I want to see and what I expect is for them to learn from last year and be certainly more consistent and travel more than they did last year. So that makes sense. It's, and I expect that to, I expect us to have done research on ourselves to watch tape to see where we didn't play as well, right. which was on the road, and to be better. Now we talked about Ken Dorsey. I want to see like how has imp- and I hope you know uh, reporters and everything ask those questions mm-hmm. throughout training camp. Why don't OTAs. you go down there and um, ask them? <laughs> that's a good. That's good. I mean. That's good, but you know what? The reason why I don't, Brian, Maria, is because I don't really want to be You got things seen. to do. Nah. <laughs> Josh, be- I got Josh is a busy to man, do. right? <laughs> I don't want to be seen as a, gu- as a guy in the media yeah. as it relates to the team. I'm just a fly on the wall when I'm there. I want the guys to continue to trust me that, oh, yeah. yeah, I know these things. Yeah. I don't want to, I'm not going to say anything. because You know the questions that, you there, know the exact questions exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. And the things that happened there stayed there. And whatever they put out, they put out. And we can comment on the things that they put out. But nothing that a player tells me or a coach tells me that I will bring. Well, just, just send me. Good if you it. just send me, you just text me the questions, do like a couple bullet points. And, and here's I'll... where we have a problem. Go ahead. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was going to ask, do y'all after, because I got highly distracted when he said something about us all going to Brazil on Big Plays Dying. <laughs> she's still, um, she's still, we probably she's need to, call, we need to probably dying. call Ken. Ken Miles, make that happen. <laughs> Dave, call Ken. We going to Brazil. Oh as, my as a gosh. company, um, do y'all need me to slide into the, into Deshaun Watson DM to see if he's healthy, see if he's still him? I think he's still him. Okay, and Maria, you're fine. I don't, got, I don't care. I mean, he might ignore, but at least I sent it. You, 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 you know, stay out of people DMs. I'm glad you asked though. Nobody slide in DMs. Don't slide in nobody DMs. <laughs> hey, bro, you good? Cause we counting on you this season, we man. On they on trying you. to move the stadium. Look, you guys, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, now welcome back to the show. I'm just, you know, I don't got no problem sliding in the DMs, Josh. Yeah, I, I know. You know, I, I know. I just want you to stay out of the okay, DMs. Okay, I'll stay out of the DMs. Um, so I can stay out of DMs. Because I got a, well. I got a Finstagram. You got a fake, a fake, a fake Instagram. Instagram. That's why I do all my trolling. Oh, okay. Do mm. you be in mind? Like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you looking sexy? I'm like, no. I, I, am, I am merry, yeah. happily. <laughs> and I'm be like, man, look at this Maria. She forgot to turn her, uh, <laughs> her location off. She on the wrong. <laughs> She right, here. she right here at home, yeah. no. so Josh, silly. you have been raving about Coach Stefanski and Andrew Berry. I'm, I'm, um, I'm just, I want to see, I want the questions to be asked on how um, the, the integration mm-hmm. of um, all the newer coaches are, are taking hand. Oh, yeah. So we had an addition of Ken Dorsey. And I want to see, like, you know, how are they integrating his Because he's there for Watson, right? His football and philosophy. Right. Of of uh yes he's but is he just there strictly for Deshaun? I mean he or may be it, the, it, his it's gonna be a I couple of plays. His role may expand. It it may be constantly evolving. Mm-hmm. They'll never ever come out and say that they hired him personally for Deshaun Watson, but one hundred percent that hire was molded by help hoping that this guy can come in and help us get Deshaun Watson on the right track. Hundred percent can't see deny that. that. The mm-hmm. fruit of that should look different, and I think with the hire of Ken Dorsey. We should notice as a fan base, we should see a difference in the style of play, maybe more comfortable because Ken, he's been there and done that. Yeah. And he should be able to integrate his knowledge within Deshaun and Deshaun should be able to receive it and be and, and it, should, it should flow naturally. And we should see the fruit of that labor play you know, out. One on the thing field. that I um I was going to ask you later on the show, but since we're kind of alluding to it right now, um, I want to ask you because I, I get a lot of parents that call me and ask advice regarding their kids in sports. How does um, someone who was as stellar as Deshaun Watson was from his, where was he at the Texans, right? Yes. How do you tell. come to a totally different team and not have success? And this is and this is just not uh, geared towards him. When we watch certain 
kids that we know can play sports, like high school sports. Everybody's trying to get the D1 scholarship, right? How is it that they can have an excellent game or excellent season, and then the next time, next time you see them play, it's just it's not there? If you're, because I, I, I ran track, I didn't do anything on your level. When you had the talents that you guys had, right? Why sometimes is it not consistent? Right. And, and can you, any advice you can give to somebody watching? Because I'm clueless. Like, even when I watch our son play, right. how did you kill it all last year? Now this year you're like in a slump. So at What the, happened? Okay. At the uh, professional level, mm -hmm. let me tell you this. Um, the first year I had success returning, the jig was up. <laughs> Everybody now knows. They knew, they knew to look out for you. Got cribs. Cover cribs. Cover <laughs> cribs. <laughs> And, and I coaches, need three bodies. Cover Cribs. We're going to kick it this way. We're going to do this. They on so, to me. So I had to. Don't let Cribs touch a damn ball. Right, right, right. Don't kick it to him. <laughs> or don't, you know? So they was kicking over your head. I'm the like, what jig is, is up. Oh, yeah. The jig is up. Yeah. If I'm a coach going against a Deshaun Watson or against any other athlete, mm -hmm. I watch film on him. How can I stop this guy? So I'm realizing, I'm figuring it out how to stop this guy, what he struggles with. I'm going to give him only the coverages that Deshaun struggles with or low percentage or things that make him check it down or have question marks. I know what he likes to throw. I'm going to play the defense against what he likes to throw so he can settle for something that he doesn't like. Right. And we say that to quarterbacks all the time. Take what the defense gives you. But a lot of times, quarterbacks want to throw the ball down the field. He wants to throw the ball down the field. But if they're playing a defense that makes you not want to throw down the field, you're going to tend to struggle. Yeah. So I, I would say continually to evolve your play, mm -hmm. continually to rededicate yourself to your craft, expanding your view and not in cha constantly changing up, that'll breed that consistency of success. You can't do the same thing every time and expect another athlete who wants it just as bad or even more to just sit there and let you do it. Mm -hmm. So you might have success one time, but the next, hey, you got to get your game up. You got to do something different. It's somebody out there just like you who wants it the same way. Now, when you talk about all these coaches that are coming in, Ken Dorsey, Mike Rabel, um, how much of that has to do with coaching? And the only reason I'm asking this is because it was a time when our son was playing basketball where I'm like, I'm sick of these plays. Like, right. it, it started looking like he was a robot. The whole team was like, I knew where they were going to go, what they were going to do. At what point, when does, I understand getting a good coach, because I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm be honest with you guys. I'm excited to see what Tomlin does with um, Russell Wilson. I okay. just want to see how much coaching affects his play. Right, you're interested at in that what, coaching piece. Yeah, go ahead. yeah, yeah. I'll, what, at what point does instinct kick in over coaching? Oh, or wow. is it, Or is it supposed to be, now listen to your coach? Right. I you get know? that. And again, um, what, that question is more geared towards the non-professional. Because okay. the professional has talent with fundamentals. Mm -hmm. He's been there. He's done it. He ha he's using his talent, talent on top of fundamentals. Okay. So he's fundamentally sound, and he's using his talent to add some flavor to it. So it's a lot of kids out there at the high school and collegiate levels that may not be as talented, mm -hmm. but they have good coaching mm -hmm. and they stick to their fundamentals and that gets the job done. Sometimes that gets you to the league, that gets you to prof to be a professional. Mm -hmm. And what keeps you to be uh, in the NFL and to succeed professionally mm -hmm. is now you add the talent piece. Now you add your will. Meaning in the how top, bad the, you want it okay. over the next person. In the top level Every coaching. Every single player. And the coaching matters as well as how, how well a coach can pull that out of you. Well, hold on, though. Because we just <laughs> talked about, we just talked about you know, draft players. Sometimes them, them, them top dollar draft players ended up being a bust. Are there some trash coaches in the NFL? Oh, definitely. You don't say, okay, I'm going to say don't say no names. Definitely. I'm not okay. going to say no names. Okay. But, Oh, definitely. Okay. It's definitely coaches that didn't belong in when I was there. Okay. I'm like, man, how, how did you, you get? Because they hired their friends. How did you get this job? The, the, I'll say the best organizations that we've noticed, the ones that had the uh, success every season, they make it to the playoffs or Super Bowl or beyond, it seems as if they're not just hiring their buddies. Right. So we noticed that. But right. you would say yeah to that? I would say yeah to that. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, I do want to move to our uh, the game of the night last mm -hmm. night. Girls are getting Iowa in. versus LSU. LSU. Or should I say Caitlin Clark versus LSU? She was balling out. I ain't gonna say it Andrew was Reese because uh LSU has some some other talented athletes. Oh yeah. But I think beyond but above and beyond, mm -hmm. Caitlin Clark, without her, out. her team doesn't make it as far. And no. what at all. Not even close. I don't think they they may limp into the the uh, the tournament without her, mm -hmm. but I I think they would have been eliminated in the first round. Right. It's Caitlin Clark 
versus everybody else. Yeah. They were neck and neck, and they started pulling uh, away. I coined third. that term, by oh, the way. Oh, is that, Caitlin, is that your... I'm coining it. I'm coming after anybody. <laughs> Don't make no Caitlyn Carr versus everybody, versus everybody else. else. But she was on fire last night. And um, I think she did the most that one player can do mm-hmm. for her team to put them on another level. Right. I mean, um, because even as a coach, right, in basketball, like um, I remember when Kent made it, Kent State made it to the Elite Eight, yeah. the boys. Mm-hmm. They lost to Indiana. I'm never going to forget it. It's just, It was nothing they could do because Indiana kept shooting beyond the arc, way beyond. Way beyond. The, I remember three, that. Three, four feet beyond the arc, like, and there's nothing they could do. So they had to expand the zone, exp- switch to man. And every shot they threw up, they made. What is a, a LSU supposed to do, Ryan, if every— Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was an unbelievable performance. I mean, I was glued to it. I mean, Caitlin Clark, I mean, as good as she is shooting the ball, she was fa- facilitating it just as well. Right. I mean, and you, gotta, you have to—as soon yes. as she crosses half court, you have to respect her. But then she keeps you guessing on your toes whether she decides to penetrate. And she mentioned in her post game, she talked about the key was just, uh, um, you know, not leaning on one thing too heavy, whether it was shooting the three or getting to the line. Because she kept them guessing. She did a bullshit. And when you do that, I mean, you have to do it on a player like Caitlin Clark, obviously a general generational shooter so a player like that quite literally changes the game plans and all you all it does is get your other shooters open so she did an amazing job and yeah i mean now best player in the tournament easily yeah. if i'm watching if i'm a coach and i'm watching her maria and ryan mm-hmm. i did see some flaws in lsu's defense so when you caught when you're guarding someone like uh caitlin clark you, you can't run under the screen yeah you gotta get out of you gotta, you can't go over you you gotta go you gotta fight through it yeah absolutely because she once soon as you give her that that's all have you watch Kerr, Steph Curry, when you when you guard it, you gotta go through it and stay in his face and try to hold to stay with them because all they need is a little ounce of space right. to step back for separation and let it go. And every time I remember the girl um, for LSU trying to fight through the picks, Haley Van Lith. Yes, and then when she was successful, that was the second part of Caitlin Clark's game was penetrating and passing off mm-hmm. of the picks. She was barbecue chicken. Right. She was just cooking and it was like, wow, it was it was great to see um the the comp the level of competition that both teams had. I mean from the start all the way to the finish. It got carried away towards the end because mm-hmm. they start pulling away. Pulling away. But every since the 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 tip off I mean, it was back and forth, back and forth. They were shooting threes, then they was making twos. Angel Reese held her own. Yeah. Um, they had some stars on LSU. I like LSU's coach. She's very <laughs> uh, emotional fire because she was a former player as well. And um, it, it was just good to see the competition. And, you know, that's why I would, we're glued um, to the screen. I would love to be able to add to this conversation, but our streaming uh, service that we have only allows you to watch two TVs at one time. It was three. Three so TVs. who who did you give our pass our login to? Why is it I had my I was watching on my phone in the kitchen. Our daughter was watching in North Carolina. My were, dad was trying to watch it <laughs> in DC, and I was trying to watch it upstairs. So anytime so I would saying, click on it, I would get a phone call. Mouth. You cut the show off. Who cut the show right. off? I'm like, what are what? what? So right. I would love to add more to that. Um, Clark has declared for the 2024. WNBA draft. So we're going to talk about the big offer. And that some she, more. Yeah, yeah, when we return, don't go anywhere. So, Caitlin Clark has entered the 2024 WNBA draft. And Who LSU coach her? said... She happy. She was like, man, I'm glad we getting rid- Glad yeah. you leaving, honey. Because, yeah, yeah. man, uh-huh. you know, rightfully so. Right, right. But let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark was offered $5 million from Ice Cube's The Big Three League. Do we think that she should take the $5 million and play? Because I think she can manage to play for both leagues. And um, I don't know how oh, you feel. Really? I know how I feel about you it. You can play in both leagues? Well, because they're in different times. And the big three only has, well, it's only a month. It's only eight games. And she's going to get possibly $5 million to play in that league. What do you guys think about this? I think she's probably getting more in that in those, uh, what is it called? Those NIL, F- deals. NIL deals. That's the, if she stay in college. So she's declaring. Oh, those ends so she's after leaving, that. She's going professional. What you think, Ryan? I mean, obviously, if she can do both, and that's the best of both worlds. I mean, five million dollars is, is is crazy amount of money, and especially and they're not making that in. The and WNBA. I was going to say, and especially in the market that is the WNBA, unfortunately, unfortunately, they don't make that amount of money. It's just it, it's a fact. Um, maybe that will change because nowadays, I mean, we're seeing the women's 
I've never seen we, a woman's we were all be this big. Everybody, everybody was this. watching. Everybody was glued. The and women I, are up right, right now. Yeah. Let me say this. Please go ahead. The uh, WNBA players, they also play in Russia. They play in yeah. different states, o- different countries overseas to make more money. But we don't want them to have to do that. They should enough. be able to make money right here in our, our country. You so, know? I, I, I'm going to just tell There's you my There's an audience. Take. We're watching. I think uh, she should put her big girl hat on, big woman hat on, and do business. And... And try entertain to some, all offers and try to get some ownership in the big three. That'd be sweet. And and st- and, and, and counter offer Ice Cube. <laughs> okay, I lie. You know, yeah. maybe eight million. Oh, you talking spicy? Six and a half. Yeah. And I love a man that's all for the empowerment TV of revenue. women because it's all about her. If they pay her that, they could pay her more. Give me some of that TV revenue. Right. Yeah, or absolutely. I'm going to bring some more girl. I'm going to get Angel to come in. Yeah. And we're going to be this three on three. Oh, so they should be, be thinking crazy. more. They, they could, could change the league. Yes. If they could team up, that would be crazy. Well, I don't want them to team up because. Oh, you, oh, you want to be a battle. You want to continue on the battle. Let's be more of what we seen last night. Like if you take two, two people out, you got three on three. Caitlin Clark and two of her friends versus Angel Reese and Flo and, and two of her, you know. It'd be a, a rematch of last night. So I think if she skewed the numbers in her favor, do some work, some business out, I think that big three league will pop all for. Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you how excited I am to watch it. And great for the city of Cleveland that the women's final four is coming here. We get to watch Paige Beckers take on Clay, Caitlin Clark and the North Carolina State. Um, both North we Carolina States and the men's and women's are in the final four. And they're taking that. on the undefeated South Carolina. So, I mean, it's honestly more entertaining than the men's final four this year. I like watching And, and it uh, just South so happens Carolina. that uh, the Probably, I would argue that this UConn Iowa game is going to be the biggest women's right. college hoop game there ever has been, and it gets to be in, in right in our backyard. Right, I, I'm a, I'm gonna love that. Um, Ryan, South you, Carolina, Ryan, you real cool? You cool with your parents? Yeah. Get them to buy some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you see the prices? <laughs> get your That's first. what I'm saying. The price, oh, they're hey, crazy. The $900. I love that. I, hey, I love that. The That's like the lowest price one, though, right? I might yeah. be on the floor. I love that for the ladies, though, because it's... <laughs> I might it's, be on the floor with been, hanging out I, you with the police be. officers and security You know, dogs. You know I must be speaking down there on one of the panels. Hey, I'm about to just you got a plus on Friday. You got a I'm plus one? I know, I know, right. Josh, the women are up right now. I'm so glad. Even though, you know, us consumers, we got to buy those tickets. I'm happy to see that it's kind of trying to balance itself out. Because the women, they are entertaining entertaining as heck. They bring a certain flair to the game. Like, I'm loving the hair. I'm loving the lashes. I'm loving the nails. Right. I'm loving the Flojo uh, leggings. You know, yes. Are you telling me to stop talking? No, nah, I'm, I'm complete. I'm what? completely like, yes. You try to like, go to commercial. I'm mm-hmm. just I'm just loving all of it, so I'm glad the girls are up right now. Ryan, you said that the um the Final Four is going to be here, what, I think it's April 4th. This weekend, yeah. This weekend through the 7th. They're going to have so many events downtown. They got things for the kids. They're going to have merch they're giving away. It's events going on all weekend long. So make sure if you're looking for something to do, you go to their website and check out because, you know, we got to represent for all these out-of-towners coming to our city. Absolutely. And Ryan going to talk to his parents about um, getting us some getting tickets. Getting some tickets. I'll, I'll see what I can do. During this break, we'll be right back. <laughs> Josh, you know, welcome back to the show. I'm so excited. Have y'all heard about this guy that was um <laughs> I forget his name. Why you laugh? Because he, he was going around New York why City. She laugh? I'm, I, don't, I know I don't, why she laughed. And I don't need to laugh about this. No, not not even that story. The okay. guy that was going around New York City punching women in the face that were on their phones. Oh jeez. Oh, the, the something <laughs> jabber. Oh yeah. They, they, they take my either. laugh back. I know. They yes, right. They I, caught I him. They back. caught the guy. I'm happy. No, he was going around punching women in the face that were on their well, phones. Was, I didn't know you were. You didn't. Y'all didn't see that. No, I didn't know you were talking about. Hold on. Y'all see the man that us for a loop on that. See the man that's getting married to the conjoined That's twin? what I thought you were talking about. That's what she was talking about. <laughs> you went totally left field. Okay, I'm so like, wait a minute. Really Hear me out. Hear me out. Ryan, now we are looking for you some love. No, Ryan, no, we no, we got no, you. no, no. You know, double the fun. No, no, doesn't work like that. Okay. Doesn't work like that. Song? How did the double no. miss go? No, no, double no, no, your no, no, something, no. double your fun. Spirit gone. No, I don't know. I don't even know that commercial. Not double your fun. Okay, so how does that work? If you're uh, the, the conjoined twins, I'm sure they're going to have some type of like lifetime movie or some type of doc. Not, what's it called? Reality show. Right, right, right. Wonder if, I, if I'm a conjoined twin, I don't necessarily like your boyfriend. Mm. And then I don't want to sleep in the bed with all three of us. Like, how does that? I mean, I'm Marie, happy they you found love, sample. though. What was that don't funny say thing what you... I said yesterday. No, no, I'm just saying. No, I had just read a comment there online. There are some things that um, you be... can do with uh, in a relationship like Here that. Is that like a thruple? Josh. Is that like a threesome? In essence, no. yeah. What? And that, yeah. Yeah. So he's probably loving it. 
Oh he's yeah, why do you think he did it? I, I just I think he's loving it, Marie. I think maybe it's the best of both worlds. I, I, I don't like him. I, I mean, to each their own, but like I don't. You can't convince me that's not some type of fetish. I think, man, he probably like, oh yeah, I will take both of y'all. Come on. Uh, goodbye. Yeah. Okay, so you know what? The eclipse is going to be next Monday. We got a lot of family members trying to come in town to see the eclipse is going to be like. I guess it's like a viewing spot right here in our city. So I hope you guys get out and enjoy that. Look, we're out of a, we're out of the show. We got to go. Love y'all. Have a good weekend. See y'all. Peace. <laughs>